Okay, so it just finished, and yeah, it probably took about um, 45 seconds or so, it's not very long. We'll go ahead and click on Lambda Forums, and then what we're going to do is click on Access Keys. Now, you're going to want to keep your Access Keys secret, and so they shouldn't be shared with anyone, uh, but they will be used in order to actually, but they will be used by our application in order to actually connect to our storage instance here. So just using key one that you have here. So just go ahead and keep this window open for the time being. And what we're gonna, so go ahead and copy out this connection string from key one. And then what we're gonna do is actually go down into our code. And the way that I'm gonna do this is at the root level of our web application. What I'm gonna do is create a new JSON file. So I'll select new item and then just search for JSON here. And then yeah, I'm just gonna select plain old JSON file here. And I'm gonna call this um, storage settings. And you could actually add this configuration in your, and you could actually also add this in your app settings if you like. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new file here and show you how you can do it this way as well. Um, but we're going to call the section connection strings um, just as the same that we have connection strings in our app settings.json. And just to revisit that very briefly, I'm sorry, not um, app settings. Um, and yeah, we move connection strings down into our development configuration. Um, so here we have the default connection for our local SQL Server instance. I could add another connection string here to like the Azure uh, blob storage connection string, um, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and create it in a separate JSON file that we could manage. And so we'll have a connection strings object here, and I'm just gonna call it Azure Storage. And I'm just gonna call it Azure Storage Account, or maybe just Azure Storage. And then here we'll go ahead and paste in that connection string. So make sure you're passing in the connection string and not the key. The connection string itself will actually contain the key. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. But now we need to make sure our application actually picks this up. And so what I'm gonna do is now head into our program.cs file. And there's actually quite a lot that's packed into this create default builder, which takes care of a lot of the responsibilities that you may remember seeing in um, .NET Core 1.0 if you had worked with uh, the previous version of this framework where we're actually adding various JSON files. And so here what we're going to do is we're also going to make sure that we add our new storage settings.json file. So what I'm going to do is on this create default builder that we pass args, um, in between here and where we call .use startup, we're going to call configure app configuration. And this is a function that takes a single argument and it's a callback that takes a, a web host uh, builder context. That's our builder context here. Um, we'll just call it builder context and then config, which is an I configuration builder. So we'll say I hosting environment. Again, this may look familiar if you are coming from a .NET Core 1.0 background. Oops, and I'm just missing a single parens here. Okay, and then our config, we can add like any number of different configurations here. Um, we could add environment variables, for instance, and JSON files and XML, that sort of thing. Um, but we're gonna add a JSON file and we're gonna go ahead and add our storage settings.json. And we'll go ahead and make optional false as well. And reload on change to true. Now, on the other hand, something else you could do here is like if you wanted cloud storage only in certain environments, like say a staging environment and a production environment, then you might think about putting your storage settings in your app settings, that development, or in the particular app settings configurations you have for different environments. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we can close out of program.cs as well, and close out of our JSON files, and we'll head back to our profile controller, 
and so now we can actually connect to our Azure storage and now we can actually connect to our Azure storage account container so what we'll say is our connection string is equal to um, well we now now we need to pass in our configuration so what we're going to do for that is simply also inject a private read only I configuration and we need to bring this in from uh, Microsoft extensions configuration and we'll set it in a private field here okay so now we'll scroll down here and on our configuration we can call get connection string so this configuration interface just represents pairs of you know key value pairs of config keys if you will and so we have some pretty simple methods on this um, for instance we have one um, that's just called get connection string and that's going to get any of our configurations that are, are labeled as connection string so if you recall in the storage settings.json file we had this connection string called azure storage account so let's go ahead and just type that here okay so that's our connection and now in order to get our blob container what I'd like to do here is actually make this responsibility of our upload service. And really perhaps we could kind of delegate a lot of the responsibility that's in this method to classes outside of the controller. In any case, for getting the blob container, I would like to implement this in our upload service. So we're gonna have a container anyway. And then we're gonna use the upload service and we're gonna have a method on it called get blob container that we pass a connection string. Okay, so upload service, and in fact, if we head to the interface, we're going to have a cloud blob container type. And it's going to take a string connection string. And so if you control period here, we need to bring in Microsoft Windows Azure Cloud Storage. And what we also need to make sure is that in our dependency list here, that we bring in Windows Azure.storage. So if you right click on the project and select Manage NuGet Packages, let's go ahead and search for Windows Azure.storage. And we need to obviously browse for that. And we'll go ahead and download the latest stable release for this. So go ahead and click Accept to the license terms. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and close this. And we can close the interface and yeah, now in our upload service, we'll control period to actually implement our interface. And now let's fill out our get blob container method. And so here we'll create a storage account variable and we'll call it cloud storage account. And this is where we need to bring in Microsoft Windows Azure.storage namespace. And then we can just call dot parse and pass it the connection string. And then we can actually create a client here, we'll just call it blob client. So we'll say storage account dot create blob client. And then we can return it and we can call this get container reference that we pass a string, which is just the name of the container where we'd like to store our profile images. Okay, so we're going to get the container reference to something that's profile-images. So if we head back into our account here and we go to overview, we're going to go ahead and add a container and I'm going to call it profile-images. And for the access level, let's go ahead and make it blob access. So we have anonymous read access for blobs only. Okay, so we have our container and this is the name and that should correspond to the name that we pass this get container reference method. All right, so then back in our profile controller, let's go ahead and parse the content disposition response header. And so this is gonna come from the file that gets passed to our method from the upload form. So I'll say content disposition is equal to content disposition header value dot parse and for this we need to bring in http um, dot headers and we pass this the content disposition that's actually on this iform file 
um, interface, you know, this type. So this is actually kind of nice. If we hit F12 here, you can see what we have on it. We've got like the name and file name and the content disposition, content type. We've got the headers and then some methods that we can perform as well. Okay, so as you saw from that, we can now grab the file name. And I'm gonna call trim um, double quotes on this. And now we're gonna get our reference to a block blob. <laughs> 